All right, so this is an example of what we're doing here in homework three. So this is going to build off of the lecture we had on nominal versus real uh, rates and prices. So um, it's a little bit of a different exercise. So question one, I hope you all get. You will be wanting to put down what is your age. So everyone's results, at least that are different ages, are going to be different. So for me, I am... 51. So next I want to know what's the nominal rate of return in the stock market? It says use the Dow Jones Industrial Average since I was born. And so for this, you'll see there's a spreadsheet Dow Jones that's out on BB Learn, and it looks like this. And what it has in the columns are, of course, years from 1950 all the way down to. 2021 Boop. and that's so these are the values at the turn of the year so as 2021 actually um, starts so December 31st January 1 values and what I have um, is a t-bill rate right here that's from the lecture you'll see what that is it's been as high as 14 it's currently down uh, very low 0.092 we also have the consumer price index in this column Right. And so it is, as it was in the lecture, a 1982 to 84 index, which means when you get into 82, 84 range, that's where that hundred is that the index is. And on the last column, that is the Dow Jones Industrial Index. Back in 1950, it was 200. Uh, January 1, it was... 30,606. I think it opened a little higher than that today. Uh, these are what we're going to use. So question two, what was the nominal rate of return in the stock market? Use the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And so what I need to do here, if I'm looking at these two things, is I need to, let, let's say Dow, and in 1970, even though I was born at the very end of 69, uh, here we have the Dow Jones was 800.36. And that 2021 20, January value all the way down here, if we get a little higher, is 30,606.48. So, now I've got my Dow Jones for those two different types. And these are just the indexes as they were in the newspapers in those days. So, okay, I need to figure out how do I get the nominal rate of return over that time frame, 1970 to 2021. And if you remember from homework two, you can look at the videos for homework two examples uh, five and six. We used just this basic uh, VT equals V O one plus I to the T formula, which right on our sheet, that's just that single value, future value. It's the same thing as this, just manipulated. Um, and we solved it for I. And when we did that in that homework assignment, we had VT over V O to the one over T minus one. Right? That's what we got for solving this thing for this interest rate, this discount rate. And so in this case, that's what I've got. My two values, the VT is going to be this 2021 value. The VO is going to be this 1970 value. And so the difference between those two and the ratio is going to form what we do. So I equals 3606.48 over 800.36 to the 1 over, and here you can do it however you want, 2021 minus 1970, or just put the 51 in there, minus 1. And when we solve that, that equals 7.4%. So if I took that 800 that I had in 1970 and I compounded it annually at 7.4% at the end of 2020, at the beginning of 2021 here, I would have this 30,606. So 7.4%, that's nominal because that's as the numbers came out in the values of, of that day. 
So next part here, what has been the inflation rate since I was born? And so here we're going to use that CPI. We do the same sort of thing where we look at 1970 and we see that it was 37.8. And then we come down on the list to 2021 and it was 26474. So basically that bundle of goods that they go out and buy, supermarket, wherever you want to call it, they're buying that same item bundle of goods. It costs $37 in 1970 to fill that basket. And in 2021 to buy those exact same things, it costs $260 to fill that basket. So we want to use that same thing. So we're going to take our I over here, right? That's our, our VT over VO, one minus T or one, one over T minus one. And I'll just plug these in so that we don't have to sit here because we can see that it's the same as what we did up here. So 260, 474 over 37.8 to the 1 over 51. Right, so I just did the math there, minus 1. And so that I, in this case, equals 3 point, that's a nice 3, Greg, 86%. So stock market normally has risen 7.4% in my lifetime. Inflation has been 3.86% in my lifetime, right? So if I take this 37.8 and I compound out that 3.86% annually, I will end up with this 260.474. So this gets into what we had in our lecture. Where does this, how do we figure out what the real rate is, right? And remember we had that simplification where the real rate was going to be the nominal rate minus the inflation. Okay, and so the real rate equals 7.4 minus the inflation, 3.86. Those numbers just come from up here. And that equals 3.55%. So in my lifetime, my 51 years here, the real rate of return in the stock market has been 3.55%. Um, so it gives you an idea of what rates can be. But the second part of our homework here is going to have us using these values to come up with um, basically how much we would have to save to get a million dollars by the time we're 65. So let's flip this over and we can cover that up. And now we're looking at how much money must I invest annually in real dollars using a more aggressive investment strategy, Dow Jones. So if you're thinking of those risk adjusted rates we talked about in the lecture, right? Right, this one has risk in it. And to have a million dollars in today's dollars. So the same purchasing power of today in my retirement account when I retire at the end of my 65th year. So what does that mean? That means basically if here I am at 51 and I want to get to 65, there's all these little annual years and I want to have a million dollars sitting in my account and I want to know what are all these little A's that I need to have in my timeline. So if I go to my sheet, I know it's not a single value now. I want these A's. It's a series. I want to know how much I'm going to put in there every year. It's not going to be forever. Eventually I will retire and that will be joyous. It's going to end in T years. And I know what the future value is. I want that million dollars out in there. So this is the equation that I'm going to use. So let's write that equation down. VT equals A1 plus I to the T minus 1 over I. And so what do we know here? We know the VT equals 1 million. I'll be super rich. Uh, we know what the I is here real dollars so i'm going to use that real discount rate which we solved on the last page and that was 3.55 five 
percent, right? So right here, that was my real rate of return, 3.55% in my lifetime. That's what I'm gonna see going forward. And in this case, this T is going to be 14 years. Clock is ticking, Greg, and I wanna know A, what is A? So it means I gotta solve it for A. And so I'm gonna do this kind of in one fell swoop. We did this in our homework two examples. Right, so basically I'm going to move the I up over here. So I would have A equals VT times I, right? So that's just this I coming up. And then all this part I'm going to take over onto the bottom. And that's 1 plus I to the T minus 1. So that's my equation. I can now plug my numbers into it. So I have 1 million, 4, 5, 6 zeros on that times 0.0355 over 1.0355 to the 14 minus 1. And so the A that I need to be investing is $56,381.51. That's why you want to get started on this early, I suppose, right? That would be a little difficult to try to come up with $56,000, the equivalent of today's $56,000 every year till I retire. That's what I would need to do. Okay, that's real. So that would be to have a million dollars or the purchasing power of a million dollars today in my 65th year, right? What if I just wanted to know how much would I have to invest annually in nominal dollars in the dollars of the day using again this more investments, uh, aggressive investment strategy. So the Dow Jones to have a million dollars, right? Nominal in my retirement account when I retire on my 65th year. So this one, I would have more than a million dollars of the dollars in whatever 2035 when I retire, right? There'd be more than a million dollars in my account, but it would be the equivalent of a million dollars today. In this one, I'm just gonna have a million dollars of the day in 2035 in that account. Same equation. So, right, we're just gonna use VT times I, one plus I to the T minus one. Right, same thing we had up here. Here we used the real rates in each case. Here we will use the nominal. And that nominal is just this value that we had in the beginning. So A equals, again, we're looking at a million dollars times 0 0.074 over 1.074 four to the 14 minus one. And in this case, that A equals 43,083.62. So I don't have to invest as much because in the end I have a million dollars, but it's not gonna have the same purchasing power um, that a million dollars today would have. So this is what you're gonna do for your homework. If I wanted to figure out what was the purchasing power of my million, right, in 2035, all right, assuming that discount rate, I could just take $1 million over 1.0386 to the 14th. So I'm just going to use the consumer price index and I'm going to discount that million dollars and I get equals 588689.10. So that million dollars in this case with this lower investment I would have each year, I can only buy the equivalent of uh, $588,000 today. So hope that helps you guys uh, working through real versus nominal. Um, Again, like in the lecture, as long as you're consistent, if you're going to use nominal prices, use a nominal rate. If you're going to use real prices, use a real rate. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys in class. Hope this helps. Hope the homework's a little fun. Thanks.